So then buy you a drink, obviously took you to another atmosphere. Yeah. Now, what was the story behind that? Man, I actually didn't want to do it. a trick, like, nigga, yeah. buying a bunch of drinks for people. You said you, did, you, said you didn't want to do it? I didn't want to do that song at all. It was the one song I like needed on my album. It, Snap music was popular at the time. Yeah. No, and no. my A&R was like, dude, you got to do at least one Snap song. I was like, I'll do it, but I'm going to do my version of it. And that was like the last song I recorded for the album. And that's what made them like, okay, we can put this out now. And I, I did not want to do that fucking song. Well, why did you stop? I had to. Why? Because it was taking over everything. This my career was just oh. my life. Yeah. Like you know, yeah, I I, I wanted to like you know my 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 kids. Yeah. Made two different people. Like when they saw me on TV, mm -hmm. they would call that person other daddy. Oh. Yeah. Man. When I would get home, like you know, they wouldn't run to me and shit like that. It's like I've been on the road for fucking two months. Mm -hmm. Like you ain't seen me, and it's like we we saw you. You've been. You've been on the TV. We saw you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right? So, man. you know, once that shit started taking over life like that, I just realized this, you know, yeah, being at the yeah. top wasn't super important. Yeah, <laughs> sure, I, I developed a relationship with my daughter after going through that. Well, yeah. That's just that I, I don't have no relationship with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That shit hurts, man. Oh. That shit sucks. Make you feel useless. Yeah, for sure. So, you know. Have that go on and you know being called other daddy when I walk in the house and shit is just like okay I yeah. can probably I can probably go ahead and stop this for a minute <laughs> yeah you just reset it got everything yeah, back in order yeah yeah you know you know you don't lose you don't lose shit like that you don't you don't you know you don't lose talent you no, know what I'm facts, saying no, so facts, you know facts. I was like I can get back to it I'm sure I won't be you know in the public eye as much and shit like mm -hmm, that and mm -hmm. you know won't be going off the momentum but. I still should be able to get back yeah. to it at some point. So I just oh, put that on pause. Me up. Mm -hmm. yeah. fuck. But that's real though. You know, I'm telling that's you, that's real though. That's real for you though to do that. I think it's like put your whole career on pause. I commend you for that, man. Yeah, man. And just focus on your family and kids, man. That's big. absolutely. It that's was, huge. I, man. I, 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 it took me a while to learn that. That was way more important. But I did. I fucking learned. I don't know where this video is gonna go. I don't know how long it's gonna be. I don't know how many people are gonna watch it. I don't know how many views it's gonna get. But you know what? I don't care. There are things that are going on right now in this world that don't get talked about enough because not enough people have experienced it. Even though there's a huge influx of people that are starting to experience it. And what I'm gonna talk about is when you start having success in the public eye, specifically social media, and what it does to you, and how you can see how people get lost if they had massive success through the traditional mediums that we were accustomed to when we were coming up. So if you're somebody who wants to have success on social media, you're starting to experience success on social media, you wanna know what happens when you're in those early stages of fame, you should watch this. I don't hear too many people talk about this. I'm in a position now where I'm qualified to talk about it. I'm gonna give y'all insight on the battles that you deal with and how you can see how people get lost and how I stay focused and what T-Pain is saying right here is beyond gold. And when I didn't have a child and when I was in my 20s, when I was in my 30s and I was kidless, my mindset and my focus was just so locked in on becoming the best version of what Dorian Group A2 is going to be. And the moment that little girl came, it shifted. And you think you lose the edge, but you don't. And I'm going to talk to you about that. So please, I implore you, share this with anybody who is really trying to work to get themselves from here to here, which means more followers and more views and more eyes and blue checks and money, because there are things that are going to come with that that they need to be prepared for. Before you do that, hit like, hit share, follow, subscribe, write comments. And I hope this video does help somebody. My ducks, my swans, welcome to the pod. My name is Dorian from GroupEddy2University.com and right here we got T-Pain exposing music industry secrets, family sacrifices. Number one, the reason I named the video like that is because y'all be on some Illuminati bullshit and I wanted to get y'all attention in here because people really need to hear this video. The second thing is that when you start getting I'm a Z-list celebrity. Z. Like, there's A's like, you know, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Leonardo DiCaprio. D-list is like, you know, some random person on some reality show on We TV, and then I'm Z, right? I'm off the screen, right? I go places people might know who I am, but more likely did not. But I still have to be conscious about what's going on, and that's what I want to talk to y'all about. When you start putting yourself out there on social media, if you start having any success, people look at social media, they look at those screens the same way that they used to look at television, the same way they used to look at movies, the same way they used to look at magazines, 
needs. They see you every single day, so they feel like that they know you and they recognize your face before you recognize them. When you engage with people on social media, there are some people who when they see you in person, they might let you know. I've been very fortunate. I've had a lot of people that come up to me. They're very respectful. If I'm with my family, they're cool. They leave us alone. I have conversations. I give them advice. The pond that has approached me, I love y'all and I appreciate y'all for that. With that said, it is still an adjustment. I can't talk in public like I used to. I'm a lot more conscious about information that's getting out there. When I'm out with my daughter, I'm looking and surveying everywhere. Not saying I wasn't doing that before, but I'm really doing it now. Because at any given moment, someone can walk up to me and ask for my attention. And because they have supported me, I feel like there's a part of me that does owe them that. At the same time, I have to be there for my family. And when you are trying to really become the best version of your occupational self, your family is going to suffer just in some capacity. You might not spend as much time with them because you might be upstairs recording, right? You might be up to two, three, four o'clock in the morning. They go to sleep. You're still up. They wake up in the morning. You might still be asleep because you were up late all night. You have to travel. You go on a roll like T-Pain said for two months. They come back. They don't even know who you are. These are things that are real because you're doing all of this for them. But to a child or even a woman or whoever you're with, they might not understand that because they love you for you. They don't give a damn about no followers. They loved you before all of that. And you have these dreams that you want to go after that you feel like you won't even be able to be alive if you don't make your dreams a reality. But your family is the most important thing. Family supports you through all of that. They're your number one fans, even though it might not feel like that. They love you through all that. My lowest moments, I go to my daughter. I don't ask her for nothing. I don't even talk to her about it. She's two years old. I go to my daughter because she is so genuine. Her energy is so innocent that it just completely resets anything that I'm going through. I can't buy that. I can't get that anywhere else. So I understand that when I'm here, I have to make sure that I'm reading to her. I got to make sure I'm talking to her. I'm encouraging her. I'm giving her as much daddy energy as I possibly can because there might be times I have to leave for a couple days and she ain't going to like that. Families have to sacrifice for your success. You won't meet a successful person that won't tell you that. And maybe your family might go along with you. Maybe they might help you. Maybe you might have somebody that they're building their stuff just along with you. And that is great. But there comes a time where you're going to have to ask your family to either move for you, travel with you or not see you for a long period and I don't care who you are as someone who grew up in a military family when somebody in the family is in the home for a long period of time it's gonna affect you a little bit and that's something you got to be conscious of people always talking about do you sell your soul when you become zealous famous you don't sell your soul what you do is you get rid of the life you had before so your privacy that you had before it's probably gonna be done for the amount of time that you have to waste and watching TV and talking on the phone with people about meaningless conversations unless that person is someone you really love you're gonna change because you just don't have time for it before that's what happens when you quote unquote sell your soul you are selling your privacy and your comfort from your previous life for a comfort for a new life do you want that is that a fair exchange i was broke there are people that were lying to me when i was broke so if i'm gonna get all that energy when i'm broke you damn sure that when i get money if that energy comes at least i'm prepared for it and i'd rather have money and be sitting somewhere very comfortable and have an option to take care of my daughter where if anything happens i can make it happen as opposed to sitting there with my thumb up my ass that's why i chose this that's why i do this that's why i put my face in these videos every single day that's why i share the gems that i share i give value i help but it allows me to put my family in a position that no other clark from my lineage has had an opportunity to for some of y'all that might not be what you want for those of you that watch this video and this ain't what you want thank you for watching share it with somebody who you think it might benefit for those of you that this is the life that you want and i'm still in the very early stages hundred thousand followers on instagram hundred thousand on youtube couple of blue checks whatever if this is the life that you want you gotta be prepared that your life that you previously known it's gonna get shaken up. And the people around you that love you the most, they might not like that. And you gotta find a way to figure out how to balance all of that. You gotta have a vision. You gotta be organized. You gotta know your morals. You gotta know your integrity. You gotta know your values. When you know your values, ain't none of this stuff gonna shake you up. So, I don't know if the video helped anybody. Hope it does. If it did, please let me know in the comments. All of y'all that want the success, I hope that y'all get it, but understand there is a price that absolutely comes with it. If you're on Instagram, you want help marketing your music, click the link up top. You're on YouTube, click the link in the box. Not the pod. Y'all stay true. Here we go again. Steady, are you in? I swear to God, girl, I need this to end. I'm out here on the road doing a hundred shows. And every cent I make, I'm sending back home. You told them. Group82University.com.